Hello, my name is Zach Trower, and today I'm going to be talking about pasture weed management. Now in Missouri, about 20% of the land is pastures, and the number one pest inside those pastures are weeds. And it's estimated annually that weeds cost cattle producers in the United States about $2 billion. Now commonly we would just spray these weeds with herbicides to control them. But what isn't known is how weeds and soil factors such as pH and soil nutrients interact inside pasture systems. We set out to study these interactions by surveying 46 tall fescue pastures over the 2015 and 2016 growing seasons. At each location, one plot per 10 acres was established in April and surveyed every two weeks for 24 weeks. So if a pasture was 80 acres, it had eight plots. These 46 locations are shown on the map presented. A big portion of my study was to show what weeds were most common and if they were grazed by cattle. This data will allow farmers and producers to make better decisions when deciding to manage their weeds. The table shows what the top 10 surveyed weeds were, the percentage of pastures they showed up in, and the grazing preference by the cattle. Horse nettle and common ragweed were the two most common species. Horse nettle showing up in all pastures and common ragweed showing up in almost all pastures. The cattle activity for, of both species is completely different though. Horse nettle was avoided by cattle in all locations, but common ragweed was grazed at certain times. In addition to helping farmers determine which weeds to target, we want to find out how these weed, weed species interact with soil factors. On the left you will see soil parameters and the top you will see selected weed species. The numbers in the middle refer to the change in density for each unit in change. For example, for each part per million increase in phosphorus, you see a decrease in 28 weeds per acre of common ragweed. Also this data can show us what nutrients can be more beneficial to weeds. Sulfur and manganese actually increase the density of certain weed species. All of these parameters are measured in part per million except for pH. pH is measured as a change of 1. For example, going from a pH of 5 to 6. This research shows that small increases in soil nutrient levels have a negative effect on weed density in the pasture systems. This research can be used by farmers and producers to not only increase the overall forage quality of their pasture, but to decrease the weed density inside the pasture. In the future, we plan on taking some selected weed species, running forage analysis on them to help us assess how that weed has an impact on the overall forage quality of, the system, of a pasture system. For more information, check out our Weed and Brush Control Guide, available through the University of Missouri Extension website. Mm -hmm.